previously on Rasco and Disco. Um, so this is a new book I have. It's called What's in London's Pub, London Pub Names? The story behind 650 names of London Pub Names. I have a copy of this book. Huh? I have a copy of that book. You have? Yeah, it's a great book and I met the writers. I interviewed them in fact. And now, the conclusion. So, some time ago on a live show, I decided to read out this book live on air and um, it was fun. I got this fantastic book, What's in a London Pub Name, in the last weekend on the London uh, Museum, was it? Yeah. Well, these gentlemen, who are you fellas? Uh, I'm James Potts. I'm Sam Cullen. And you wrote this fabulous book. Well, I've never written a book before, how did you do it? It's a very good question. I think that we effectively, me and Sam, during the lockdown, during the COVID-19 pandemic, we sort of went for a sort of a monthly outdoor walk to kind yeah. of keep in touch. And, you know, often there'd be a couple of tins rather than visiting a pub like we used mm. to do pre-pandemic. And uh, there was one long walk in sort of early 2021 where mm. we just got chatting about the strange yeah. and curious pub names of London. And then I sort of basically said, well, you know, what? There's, there's that publisher that does similar things about London's etymology. They've done one on like street names and yeah. tube stations. Yeah, but yeah. how about we pitch the idea about pubs? And yeah. so, you know, sent off an email to the publisher who was interested, mm. but kind of said, how are we going to compete with this Penguin paperback that does something similar? Yeah. Uh, went back and was basically like, we're going to do this, this and this different. And he came back with a contract and said, there wow. you go. So it was about eight months to write it and then six months waiting for all like, the editing and the public, you know, the adding and the, the photographs and stuff like that. And then came out in June 2021. Wow. 2022, sorry. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> it took just over a year. That, that, that sounds relatively easy. Well, well, that's what, in some regards, was, was a surprise. And obviously, James, the idea first, I, I, I would sort of class myself, I'd probably go back to... Really, if you, I probably feel more sort of risk averted. I was very surprised that, that, that we got the yes because this was March 2021. Yeah. The world wasn't in a great place. <laughs> Walking is how we kept proverbially sane. And these people come back and said, Yeah, you're going to do a book. And it's like, Wow. So, till it actually, till that moment where it came through the door, uh, and it was about a week or two before it came out, it came through the door and I was looking at it, I still thought this might not end up happening, you know, because that whole year and a half, you know, you'd been in and out of lockdown, mm. all this stuff. Till it actually happened, I, I couldn't really believe, even though we'd spent six, eight months writing all the stuff to go with it, till it happened, I couldn't really believe it. Yeah. Wow. No, no, that's amazing. So that's your inspiration. What was the... How, how do you go about researching that, though? You know, do you just Google it, or...? I think there was somewhere it was quite easy because the pub website will have our history or yeah. about us. And sometimes, the, like, it was frustrating in some respects because some pubs have the, like, we're a cosy pub that does food and beer, which, yeah. is, which is lovely and great. And actually, for most people, that's kind of what they're after. But mm. for us, it was a bit more specific. We needed to know, what's your history? What's your, what, what, why are you called what you're called? Mm. And often we find some really great bits of history on that website, but also... You know, a lot of the time, the etymology, the story of, of how it became known as that just yeah. wasn't there. So uh, it then involved a bit more deeper diving. There was a couple of key books, uh, you know, like I said, ironically, the book I just spoke about was yeah. actually quite a valuable source to kind of talk through, you know, gives some of the idea of some of the stories. Mm. Um, there's a couple of other old, slightly older books, but again, the pub's names haven't necessarily changed. Um, and then also there was quite a lot of primary research. A lot of it was us just dropping an email to the landlord or the landlady and saying, Hello, we're, we're interested in, in yeah. why you're called this. And, you know, I, I was last night I was at the swimmer at the Grafton Arms yeah. near, um, in near Holloway. And I, I sort of emailed them and I was like, like, why are you called the swimmer? Like, who is the swimmer? And the, the, the landlord, Robert, came back saying, I am the swimmer. Because when I was a teenager, I won a national swimming competition. Ah. So it's those little bits of like trivia and stories yeah, yeah. that we kind of teased out from people. Um, but Sam, you also kind of had a few different techniques yeah, as well. Yeah, I, I mean, because the, the thing that's quite interesting is some of the newer pubs, you know, someone sets them up and then someone buys them. And in that process, the name is sort of forgotten, yeah. which, is, which is frustrating. And this is one of the benefits this might, book might have, you know, someone else buys, yeah. a, buys a pub and they don't know what it's called. They yeah, can look yeah. at this, you know, 10 years from now. Um, but for some of them, 
I and I think one of them that jumps springs to mind uh, is Garrison in Bermondsey. The new owners didn't know. I, I found out who the original owners were. Looked them up on LinkedIn. This is the only time I've ever had LinkedIn Premium. Got it for free for a month. <laughs> used it in private thing. Matt messaged the person. And they said it's because it wanted to feel like a safe space. Yeah, you know, yeah. A Garrison, a home from home, and and that's. It was sort of doing a bit of that or, you know, you had to sort of join the dots a bit because mm. sometimes people hadn't put it out there. And the funny one was when I found the person who actually, they didn't own the pub, it was for a small, well, small by London standards, a brewery breaks but have a pub in, in Shepherd's Bush. It's called the Pocket Watch. It used, I think it was used to be called the Victoria. Yes. They had to rename it because the police said, we're only re letting you reopen if you change the name. And it was the marketing person at Breaksby who came up with it because she said, I think pocket watch would seem to be Victoria and it will lend itself well to a pub site. And she was right, so it was nice to be put in touch with the person. Yeah. They go, we'll put you through someone. She's like, I actually named it. And yeah. Like, well, there you go. That, that's, that's brilliant. Because yeah, when I was doing the live show and drinking, uh, one pub, uh, now my mind goes blank during the interview, it's just fantastic, you know. Um, just West London, Shepherd's Bush, um, the effect as well. Yes. I've been there for years. And when I read that, Possible spies are drinking. I love spies. Um, and that's just a great story. Do you have a particularly favourite story from this? Or are you amazed by it? how many great stories are behind these words? So I think my, two of my favourites, which are in the book, obviously. The, the one that really sort of got this going, when we were on that lockdown walk in early 2021, yeah. through like, it was freezing cold day, wasn't it? Yeah. We sort of walked from like Camden Way through to Kensington. We had a really long walk together, mm. which was great. But the one that I was talking about the most was the Pepper St. Ontiod. It, you know, on the Isle of Dogs. Yeah. And I was like, what if, what, why is it called that? St. Ontiod, like, are they some kind of, you know, yeah. fifth century monk who performed a miracle? Like, why Pepper? Like, that's such a strange connection. Yeah. And then uh, I kind of like, I, and I, you know, when you go to visit it on the yeah. Isle of Dogs, uh, it basically says Pepper Saint, S A I N T, Ontiod, but that's a bit of a lie. It's a bit of, you know, it's not entirely true. Yeah. yeah because yeah. when you actually find out the story, it, you, when you look at the address of the pub, yeah. it's actually quite straightforward. It's not Pepper, it's ST, but it's not Saint, it's Street. The pub is on Pepper Street. And the Ontiod is an acronym, which I've already mentioned twice, on the Isle of Dogs. O-N-T-I-O-D. Uh. And it was just this absolute, like, that's genius. That is absolutely brilliant. And I just thought, you know, what that, and then that sort of, as we were then chatting, it was kind yeah. of like, do you know, whatever ones are there. And we kind yeah. of then got chatting from it. And I think that's still one of my favourites because it's just brilliant. But also that was the one that was really like, actually, that then sparked the kind of conversation and about... You know, there's that publisher so you know so that kind of went from there uh, another one of my personal favorites is um john the unicorn mm. in peckham which again i basically emailed the pub and they came back relatively quickly which was really great of them just to be like i'm not the original landlord but the original landlord had a um, daughter at the time she was only a few years old mm. but her favorite cuddly toy was a cuddly toy unicorn that for some reason she called john and the pub is named after that. And I just think that's so heartwarming and so lovely. That is nice. And uh, we, we went there recently, yeah. didn't we? And, and we saw John is behind, not behind the bar, but kind of up on, on one of the shelves mm. in a glass container. Um, so you can go and visit John the Unicorn and actually see the unicorn yourself. So it's a little, little cuddly toy for kids, which, is, which again, is just yeah. really lovely. So yeah, that's good. there's two of my favourites. Uh, and I, I think similarly, um, sort of like the ones we had to delve and sort of unpick it. So there's a pub in Soho called The Spice of Life. It was renamed in the late 80s. You couldn't really find out why it was called. You, you could hazard a guess, variety is the spice of life, and obviously Soho has plenty of variety. Though mm. I'll be made a lesson it used to, but so it took a little while to get through. Uh, the people in the pub didn't necessarily know. I think we went on a visit there once to find out. Yep. And eventually, through emails and emails, we got through, I got through to someone quite head up in the, it's owned by McMullins, who's sort of based in Hertfordshire, mm. and they said well, it was about threefold thing. There's obviously the spice of life. Variety of Spice Life from Soho, it's a Chinese, Chinese town nearby, obviously Spice and everything that goes with it. But also, the person who wrote Variety of Spice of Life, that particular poem, mm. is from Hertfordshire, William Cobra. So obviously that links back to where their brewery's from. Uh -huh. So there's that like triple layer of the local, the local to them, and also just, you know, another angle of the sort of whole Soho stuff. And sort of another one, because... I think what I like most about the book is we jump around between historic, modern, you know, that's why we set social, cultural and political. But I quite like a more recent one, it's up in Islington, it's called The Alpaca. And the reason it's called The Alpaca, it was, they opened just before lockdown, it's a husband and wife sort of team. And one of their first holidays they went on together was alpaca trekking. <laughs> they said in Kent, not in, not in Peru or somewhere. <laughs> and then on, and then, but they also called it the alpaca because alpacas are effectively the most social creature. They can't be yeah. on their own and they don't walk, walk better 
as a metaphor for a, a pub. So the yeah, Alpaca also looks very good in the sun as well. So, you know, old and new combined, really. And that, yeah. that, that's, what we re- that's what I really like anyway, about the variety. And it is a massive variety in the book. Yeah. yeah have you written anything before? Is this your first book? This is the first book. I mean, basically, when I pitched it to the publisher, it's kind of you've written a couple of little bits before, but I've basically just got my own blog, which you yeah. know, I sort of write sometimes about what my favourite pubs are, and that does a little bit okay. But you know, it's kind of tens or you know, the occasional one gets a couple of hundred views. But yeah. like, so like, there was a little bit of that, and I think you know, fair play to the publisher, they took a gamble on on two blogs. I mean, like, say you've got a little couple more writing credits than me, but I yeah. haven't really before this. But came feel out. free to plug your blog, blog by the way. Oh yeah, no, I mean just James Potts' blog. I mean, I write about transport and pubs and London and yeah, life course. sometimes. My my travels is very much yeah. like a personal blog, but yeah. Yeah, but well, so I've done stuff in the past for Londoners. Yeah. Primarily about pubs, but sometimes about public transport. Yeah. Uh, going a bit more left field, so. I did something about when they were going to do a different route for the Channel Tunnel Rail Link. That would have gone through and demolished a lot of Peckham. And then when they were going to put Eurostar in a building at King's Cross mm. rather than at St Pancras. But then a lot of stuff was about pubs. So I did one where I went to the pub closest to the north, east, south and west boundaries of London all in one day on public transport. <laughs> Don't necessarily recommend that. But um, And then before I did this uh, blog from 2013, 2016, where I tried yeah. to find the nicest pub by every tube station in London. So that was a, a little bit of fun. It's called Inside Track with two ends. Bad pun, I know, but that was yeah. 13 odd years ago. But, well, like 10 years ago, it flies by. But that was a sort of continuation of that desire to explore and find as many different pubs as possible. But amazing. Re- really, guys, it's just amazing just to hear the passion about it. And, uh, by the way, we're in the West London. Where are we again? We're in the Dodo in Hanwell. Check it out. Um, thank you, fellas. No, it's been two months in the making to get this, and I really appreciate your time. Are you going to do another one with the best beer in London, or Ooh, what's behind I mean, a beer name? Well, I mean, that's that's something that, you know, we, we're always sort of open to it, I think, in terms of, you know, yeah. write, writing stuff together. And, and, and you know, to me, it, it's certainly, I'm kind of thinking, yeah, I'd, I'd like to expand and do a more wider geographic one. Like, what's in an English pub name, I think, ah. would be great. And we kind of, you know, there's quite a lot in there that are generic names, that you like the mm. Red Lions and, and you, you know, your, your White Hearts and stuff, but... Um, you know, more widely then it would be great if we, you know, we could write an English wide sequel or, you know, a UK wide one, depending on whether we, you know, but, but I mean, to sell a few more copies of this one first, I think, yeah. and, and uh, then we'll get there. But I think having done this, it's fantastic because it always makes you want to go around with a notepad on you because you go somewhere in the UK, it's somewhere really bizarre. So last summer I was touring East Lincolnshire by bus for work, don't ask. <laughs> but going through somewhere, I think we were going from Sutton Sea or Mablethorpe to Louth in Lincolnshire. Um, and somewhere in one of those villages, there's a pub called My Father's Moustache. I was like, I've got to remember that. And then last night, a friend of mine sent me a picture. I said, I've been past that. He said, oh, I thought you might know it. But you go through and there's one, because, you know, you, you're a bit of a you, you know the pub right by Nottingham Station called the Vatten Fiddle because it's by a tax office. You yeah. know, there's all that sort of stuff. And there's loads of that mm. across England, Wales, Scotland. So, yeah, there's no shortage of material or things related to pubs. So... But also, your friends also send you stuff. Like, my friends send yeah. me stuff saying, oh, look at this great pub name in, in so-and-so, or yeah. whatever. And I'm just like, okay, yeah, that's another one for the, for the you know, the, the sequel if we ever exactly. get there. You know what exactly. I mean? But I, I dearly love to write, because it's been a joy to write this and work with Sam. And, you know, it's great to see it out there. You see it on the bookshelves yeah. and yeah. the bookstores. And it's like, yeah, it's, I'm really sort of proud whenever I do sort of see it out in, out in the wild, as it, it were. It's fascinating. And the thing that is great, and I love to, I don't know yeah. if people watch this video, is I just love to know what other people like. Like when you did your video and you're bringing mm. things out like the Billy Murray and that's mm. how you learn about whipping boys up. That is the bit that we've done this and people have bought loads of people. But I'm still really curious to what bits make people smile because we know what our favourites are but I really don't know what other people's are. So people watching this, if you have bought, yeah, let people know in the comments because that's the fascinating thing. Different different things float different people's boats. Yes, yeah. absolutely. All right. Briefly, every beer tuber does this. What's your favourite beer? Crikey, any kind of hoppy pale ale. I don't have one that jumps out at me, but something like that is just, it's got to taste hoppy and it's got to be about five or six percent and it's delicious. Fantastic. I don't need to think about it. Harvey's best bitter from Sussex. I, I knew he was going to say yeah. that, by the way. <laughs> Lewis is fine. And they have a couple of pubs in London as well. They the Royal Oak and the Cat's Back. Both good establishments. It, indeed. Thank you very much, fellas. You're very welcome. Cheers. Thank you. Cheers.